Billy here. Question, what is the Word of God? Is it the Bible? Is it the King James Bible? Is it the Schofield Study Bible? What is it? The Word, the Living Word, the Living Bible, the New King James, maybe it's the Slavonic Bible, uh, the Orthodox Bible. I don't know. What's, what's the Word of God? You read all these different versions and you see there's some passages where, we'll say, totally different translation. I found that uh, in a real intense study of the book of Job, especially the speech of Elipaz the Temanite, because I saw that being abused when I was uh, a young Christian. I wanted to understand, where does the truth lie? I mean, the word, it's the word, it's right here, it's logic, it's grammar. Read it. This guy's saying this, this guy's saying this. The Living Bible says something different than the King James, if I remember correctly. There were versions that had totally different meaning out of some of the passages. If you return to the Lord, you will lay your gold among the stones of the brook, yea, the gold of Ophir among the dust. Or no, in the dust. You'll lay it in the dust, yea, the gold of Ophir, your gold of Ophir uh, among the stones of the brook. You'll lay it down in the dust and the stones. And another version says, if you return to the Lord, you'll gather up gold as dust, yea, the gold of Ophir as the stones of the brook. Those are two entirely different meanings. How could you come to those two entirely different conclusions? Well, I went through the freaking Hebrew, even though Job wasn't originally written in Hebrew, but it's the best I could do at the time. And in the Hebrew, which it was translated from, I believe, uh, you go for a word for a word translation, and you have to have some background as to how the language works and try to figure it out. You know what? I couldn't. I guess you have to go to college for like six years to do that, and then you're still not going to be able to figure it out. Well, you know, they're both kind of right. Yeah, it's really vague, the language. Really vague. I'm not saying the whole Bible's like that. There's just places. There's disputes about the translation. Also, what books got included in the Bible? You have the Apocrypha. You have books, uh, say, for instance, some of my favorite ones, the books of the Sentence of the Watchers, or the books of the Watchers. Uh books of uh, Enoch <laughs> that took me a while to bring that up I'm tired the book books of Enoch first and second Enoch I believe those weren't included in the canon well they were but then they weren't we look at how the sausage is made some people lose their faith over seeing that. When they really go to study and you start digging up these texts that were written by the people that were on the committees of the councils to decide which books went in the Bible and there are disputes afterwards why they thought this should have been done, but he thought that should have been done. And they finally came to a unanimous decision to do it this way. Although I think it still should have been done that way. Yeah, you read all that stuff and you think, how is this the, the, the unerring word of God? You see, people wanted to include the books of Enoch, and then other people didn't because it wasn't in the Jewish holy books. They didn't consider it to be part of their text, just an apocryphal book. Uh, because their reason is entirely because it wasn't written in Hebrew, it was written in Aramaic. And the rabbis were pretty prejudiced about that kind of stuff. When you see uh, all their disputes with Jesus, there's so much prejudice and racism and everything. They wanted to throw him off a cliff because he said that God cared about some woman that wasn't even a Jewess. Yeah, look it up. But because they didn't include it, because it wasn't in Hebrew, uh, it didn't get included in the canon. And most of it. I think it was removed. I, I don't remember. You, you can look all the history. I've read it and I forgot most of it. I just know it's not there. But is it scripture? Is it authoritative? Should it be included? Well, to understand a lot of what Paul and some of the other apostles said, you really have to have an understanding of what it says because that's what they believed. It's what everybody believed back then. 
with the Book of Enoch and other inter, uh, intertestamental Second Temple period literature shows. So what's the Word of God? I was taught in uh, the evangelical circles that uh, the Bible says this about itself, and then they quote, I think it was Paul that said, uh, the Word of God is profitable for instruction and reproof, sharper than any two-edged sword dividing the sunder soul and spirit, etc., etc. This is what the Bible says about itself. That's what they taught. A lot of people believe that. Wait. Excuse me. It says that about the Word of God. The Word of God is profitable for reproof and instruction and all that, yeah, et cetera, et cetera. Yada, yada, yada. The Word of God. I'm going to say the Bible. The Bible didn't exist when that was written. That was written around 70 AD. Yeah, the Bible wasn't put together until 325, roughly. And you point that out to these people and they start doing magic tricks like, well, God knew that it was going to be put together, so that's what it meant. Really? <laughs> really? So you can just go la-la land and say things like that because that's what they must have done because this is what it must mean. You're getting into magic land. The church existed long before the Bible, but the Word of God was there. What would Paul be talking about? What's the Word of God if it's not the Bible? It's a lot of evangelicals and other Protestants that believe the Word of God is the Bible. The Bible is complete and total Word of God. The Word of God comes to people. The Word of God is in a lot of scriptures. You've got to read it and judge it. And does it bear witness with you and with other people? And you can debate it and discuss it. And if you're not all in some little weird clique that's got, you know, a cult going with something wrong with you, is good, balanced people that bear good fruit talk about these things. I've had spiritual principles, principles demonstrated to me and burned into my soul that changed my life from reading Melville and Dostoevsky and Samuel Butler and Victor Hugo. Is that sacred scripture? The Western canon? Some of it is, I think. There's no difference between that and what Paul and the Apostles wrote. There are inspired places. There's inspiration in the U.S. Constitution. It's not a sacred document. If it was sacred, it wouldn't be uh, amendable. This sacred document is absolute truth. And if you want to change it, this is a procedure for it. Really. Have people changed the Bible? Well, the Catholic Church tried to several times, and they tried to influence the how it's interpreted. They got caught, and they admitted to making forgeries of letters uh, various uh, apostolic fathers wrote back and forth to each other to that affirmed that Paul was regarded as, uh, you know, uh, not Paul, excuse me, Peter. Peter was regarded as chief and as a hegemon and as having the king, keys to the kingdom. And these, these were proven to be forgeries, and they admitted and apologized for it, you know, centuries ago. So you can't change it. That's where they got caught. Has it been changed? Well, you know, some of the stuff that's in it bears witness, and it's good, and it's profitable, and it's good for you, and it divides asunder soul and spirit. Yeah. The way people handle it, they can mishandle it, and they can abuse it. Revelation, I believe, says if anybody adds to this book, or if anybody subtracts to it, then the curses be added to them. If they subtract from it, the blessings be subtracted from them. Well, if it was not changeable, if nobody could change it, then that wouldn't be in there, would it? That's not for the Bible either, that's just for that book. And that book's part of the Bible. Interesting things to think about. You try talking to uh, most American Protestants about that, they get all huffy. 
Well, you don't believe it's the word of God, brother. You don't have any faith. Yeah. What does your faith consist of? Going to a Zionist church and just uh, reaffirming all the stuff that they're telling you without looking into it too deep and not asking questions? What does your faith consist of? Has your faith ever been tested? <laughs> I wouldn't live the way I do if I didn't have faith. <laughs> I think there's a lot of literature that's got the Word of God in it. A lot of it. And it has to be applied. It can't be misapplied. Just some things to consider. I'm just musing and ruminating while my laundry is being done. Pontificating, if you will. That's enough for this one. Billy signing out.